Intel has pulled back the curtains on its new generation of chips, and with it comes a brand new confusing naming convention. What's up everybody, Brad here back again, and Intel has released new chips today under the Ice Lake banner, their 10th generation, and the naming convention in typical Intel fashion is brand new and it doesn't make much sense, so in this video we are going to basically break it apart and help you understand what it is, help give me a little bit of sanity so I can truly understand this, and walk through it together so that we all know what we're buying and we get the right chip for the right processor and for the right task for that matter. So this is the lay of the land, the 10th gen Intel Core Ice Lake processors, as it says across the top. And let's just walk through what we have here. We'll use, for an example, initially the Intel Core i7 uh, 1068G7. That is Intel's new naming convention. And what in the heck does it mean? So the first good thing here is that Intel hasn't changed the game completely. Core i7 is still the best, or, or better, I should say. We know there's i9 now. But it's i7, i5, and i3 in the general buckets of, hey, uh, i7 is going to be better than i5, and i5 is better i3. That still stands. But inside of each of those now, there are new like subcategories. And what we're going to do here is break it apart. So the first digit is 10. And it could be 9 for the 9th gen or 10. But for this generation, it's, well, 10 because it's 10th generation. We assume that for the next generation, 11, it should stick to that name unless Intel decides to change it up again. But for now, just know that the first digits uh, represent the generation. So in this instance, it is 10. So you keep that in your mind. Now, the next number is a little bit arbitrary because what it's roughly equating to is that the higher that number is, the higher the clock speed is going to be for that particular processor. In this case, we have six, three, and zero. Know that right now, six is the top of the class and three is middle ground and then zero is obviously at the bottom. So keep that in mind that that's roughly equated to clock speed. But the next digit is actually the most important here because what this is saying is the number of watts used. Now, uh, on the first one, that i7 at the very top, the 8 actually correlates to a 28 watt chip. That means that it is the beefiest one. It is the best. It is the highest. Now, the next gen down, or next number down, 5 equates to a 15 watt U series chip. So if you see a five, it's gonna be a 15 watt U series. And if it's a zero, like you see down at the bottom, that means it's a nine watt uh, Y series chip. So there's no direct correlation there because obviously at the top it's like eight. Oh, that's easy. That is 28. And then Y is, but then you get down to the bottom and it's nine is zero. Uh, just keep in mind that again, the higher the number, the better off you're gonna be, but also the more power hungry you're gonna be. Most of the Y series chips, I believe, are going to be fanless and, keep, and lo much less, uh, well, they're more efficient, but they create a lot less heat, they use less power, and you're not gonna get the, the amount of performance that you want. Typically, I try to stay to the U series to the best of my ability when buying new hardware or recommending hardware to people, but that is a personal preference. I'm sure there'll be people in the comments arguing that you can buy a Y series for whatever. Anyways. So keep in mind, eight is 28 watts, five is 15 watts, and zero is nine watts for keeping your, trying to keep your mind uh, straight. Now, the last number is the G number, which G stands for graphics, which is kind of helpful here. Um, I, I don't know if they'll ever change the, the letter G or add other letters, but for now, it's G. So which means uh, G7, four, and one is what we have. And the, what they're basing this off of are what they call the EUs or execution units. So G7 has 64 executional units, G4 has 48, and G1 has 32. And if you want to get that Intel Irish Pro, you got to at least have 48 based on the chart and that stupid graphic that they put right in the freaking middle of this thing. Look at, why would you, you didn't need to put that there. You didn't need to put that there, Intel. Um, anyways, so he, this is the lay of the land and it kind of just helps you understand what is going on here. So we have in just one more time, so everyone's clear. Intel, we have a core, our 10th generation, so that's the 10. The six is roughly equated to the clock speed. The fourth number is the related to the watts. So you have 28, 15, and nine, and then you have the graphics at G7, four, and one. 
This is what you need to know before you go buy a chip, and this should be a good guide to helping you choose the right chip for the right task for your job or your tasks or whatever. Um, I'd like to give shout out to Intel for making us making me do this video because now I can at least reference it so that I can get my own sanity straight. But if you're trying to decipher the new Intel chips, that is the guide that you need to know, and that is what you need to pay attention to. And thanks for tuning in.